In this video I'm going to show you what to do if you've got a device with an LCD screen and some of the digits aren't working. Uh, this is a clock out of my car, we're over 25, and I had a problem with some of the digits um, weren't actually displaying, which is a bit annoying. Um, these Pectron um, car clocks, this one has, has got the Traffic Master as well, which means that it's um, not going to be very cheap to replace. In fact, they're about £40 on, on eBay, which says two things to me. Firstly, that if you can replace it with a, a new one um, from a Rover agent or what was a Rover agent, it's not going to be cheap. And secondly, it does seem to be a fairly common fault. Otherwise, there wouldn't be very much of a market in these. OK, so the problem um, can apply to one of these or to, for instance, I've got here a um, digital cordless phone and I had a problem with this one as well in as much as a whole row, row of pixels wasn't working. In fact I think it was several rows of pixels weren't working which made it quite difficult to read. Um, it is quite easy to, to, to fix this. Uh, in the case of the car clock um, I can't guarantee that it will stay fixed because in a car you have a very wide temperature range and that seems to be a problem and possibly partly what caused the problem in the first place. Um, and when I fixed this and put it back in the car um, the problem reappeared. Uh, you can try repeating the process that I'll show you in a couple of minutes um, but there's no guarantee that it'll work but nevertheless it's well worth a try. Okay now if you've come to this video having picked up on the keywords Pectron or the Rover or anything like this you might well have this self same um, traffic master car clock. You'll find it's got four connections on the back. Just to run through those quickly. Uh, the bottom one is the earth, the ground. Show you that with this blue tool it's slightly clearer. Uh, the top one is a permanent 12 volt um, supply uh, which keeps the clock running whether or not the car is, 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 um, is running. The second one is connected down to the ignition and once that has power it switches on the light so, so you can display the clock. Uh, the third one down is connected to the car lights. Um, if you apply power to that it dims the light on the basis that it must be dark outside and you don't need the light to be shining quite so bright. OK, so if you've got this self same one um, you can take it apart quite simply. <coughs> First of all note that there's a label on the bottom because underneath there is a ribbon cable that we need to be careful not to, to damage and hence we don't undo it with these two clips. We turn it over and undo it at the top and we can just hinge it over without breaking the label. To do this I'm going to use a little screwdriver. You just leave it under there quite gently. It could break quite easily so I'm going to be fairly careful. Right that's snapped open and then I'll do the same with the other one, holding it open, the top one open with my thumb. It's coming. There we are. Right, it snapped open a little more, bit more suddenly than I was hoping. That could damage the ribbon cable if you're not careful, but I think we're all right. Opening it up gently, <coughs> you can now see the ribbon cable running along the bottom, which is obviously why you mustn't open it, try and open it from the other side. That ribbon cable is where the problem lies. Let me take it apart and take the works out. We can lift it up by the ribbon cable if we're gentle. There's a cowling which disperses the light. And there we have it, the ribbon cable there connecting the LCD, that's the back of it, there's the front, the LCD to the circuit board. Now holding that with your other fingers so that you don't apply any undue pressure to it, otherwise you might make it worse. What we have to do then is simply run a hot iron along there because it's stuck to the circuit board with some kind of, of heat sensitive um, adhesive. So I've got an iron here. Um, this is a very old one which I use for this sort of job um, instead of using my wife's best one. And run it along along the ribbon cable like that. Apply pressure 
for a few seconds as you waggle it backwards and forwards like that you can feel when the iron is actually flat on the board. I've got the iron on a fairly hot setting and having got it reasonably warmed up we can then use this prying tool to press down, press quite hard trying not to let it slip off and damage anything. That's the prying tool slip off. You can only do half of it at a time actually. So we repeat the process with the other half down here. Apply the iron for some seconds. Make sure the heat gets through. Put the iron down fairly quickly while the heat's still there. And once again, press down quite hard. I'll tell you a secret, that iron isn't actually switched on. I've done this already, and so I'm just using this for a, a demonstration. But this is exactly what you do. Having done that, Hopefully that might be the problem. It seems to be the uh, circuit board end which is the problem mainly. Um, you could, if that doesn't fix it, do exactly the same on the other side. If we turn it over, we could apply the iron along the edge of the glass of the, of the LCD. Um, I'd be inclined to be a little bit more careful with that because it's glass and the heat might not improve it. Um, but if you're stuck, then that's certainly worth a try. OK, let's put it back together again and see if it still works. Right, making sure that we've got it the right way round, otherwise it doesn't go in. Right, pop the LCD in and this diffuser. This goes two ways and we have to make sure that it is the right way and not upside down. It seems to be the correct way. Right, so if we pop that in, jiggle it about a little bit until we get it to like that's it. Pop the diffuser in. Right. There's a little bit of plastic here which covers the, 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 the buttons and there are two um, bits of plastic there which um, the other end of them is the uh, buttons on the front panel. Right. Just slip it back together again. And all we have to do is gently click it back together again. That's it. Uh, while we're here, let me show you the um, bulb on the back. I couldn't work, quite work out what this was for at first. I thought maybe it was some kind of adjustment. But that is the bulb which you can easily take out. And if the bulb fails, um, you pull it out of this holder. It's a bit stiff, but it comes out. Honest, really does. Yes, there we are. And you can get a spare bulb from Halfords if you need one. Um, they're not cheap. Um, one ninety nine. I paid for one of these, which is a bit of a rip off. But there you are. Um, that's a twelve volt, one point two watt, and we just put it back in there, and twist it quarter turn to secure it. Right, if you have got the same Pectron um, Traffic Master car clock, we've got four connectors here which I told you about before, repeating myself. So let's just connect those back and check that it works. I've got here a power supply um, which um, came with a, a USB to IDE a, a adapter um, to connect a hard disk to a USB port. That's got a nice convenient 12 volt supply in it, which we're using here. Uh, connecting with a couple of miniature crock clips. The top one, you can connect it across the top two connectors. You'll remember I said the top connector is the 12 volt permanent supply, and the second one down is connected to the ignition. Right. With a bit of care, you can clip it over both those connectors, and the bottom one will put over there on the ground connector. Right, we can see already the light's on. And there we are. Let's, let's test it out. It took me six years to discover that if you press both buttons together you can put it into 24-hour mode. Um, if you press both buttons together and hold it for a few seconds it then switches the sound on, which um, presumably that's a beep that it makes when the traffic master detects something. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's run it through and see whether the, all the segments seem to work. All the hour segments seem to work, that's great. Let's take the minutes and see how they go. Right. 
and we'll have to take it up to 20 to make sure the tens digit is working. There we are, that's fine. Okay, um, there doesn't seem to be any way of testing the um, uh, the digits and the um, icons and so on for the um, traffic master display which is over here. So I can't be sure that this is completely working unless I take it out onto the road and, and find a traffic jam um, to test it with. So there's my um, Pectron um, car clock. The same principles apply if you've got, for instance, a um, decked um, digital cordless phone. This one, I said, I was missing a load of, of pixels. Um, this came as one of a pair and I've taken the other one apart already. This is the innards of it. You can see the um, LCD screen there and very much the same sort of ribbon cable here. But being a, a dot matrix display, you've got far more uh, conductors on, the, on this um, a ribbon here. Um, exactly the same principle you can apply. And in fact, it worked very well on here. Whereas on the car clock, um, when I took it out because of the temperature difference, um, the next day it wasn't working so well as it, it had been on the bench. So I can release this by releasing these two clips. Have to be a bit careful. That's that one off. And the other one, oops, there we are. Holding it with my finger. Right, now we can lift that up. And there you can see, again, if you carefully run a hot iron along there and press it down with some sort of blunt tool, um, that worked very nicely for this um, digital cordless phone. Pity I didn't discover that before I bought um, a pair of new ones. Right. Okay, well, I hope that was useful. Um, thanks for watching. And if you have one of those uh, Pectron clocks, um, good luck. I hope you have a little bit more success than I do. I'll keep trying and hopefully it'll work. Okay, bye for now.